In the power distribution world, some utilities will also look at surge arrestors too, especially those on the risers. Now in this video, we are going to look at surge arrestors and how we apply health index to this asset. Let us start off with degradation. When a voltage is present that is greater than the lightning arrestor's rating, the lightning arrestor will degrade. Now electrical puncture, thermal cracking, and thermal runaway are all signs of failure caused by um, a high heat uh, or high temperature. Now when a significant current is uh, fed through a metal oxide arrestor with a voltage above the rated voltage, um, plasma can be created in this component. And the failure of the lightning or surge arrestor can be caused by the deterioration of the ceramic material and valves, as well as the entry of moisture into the arrestor. Moisture ingress causes arrestors to operate in an unusual manner. Moisture can also cause overheating and leakage currents. The quantity of leakage current seen in a lightning arrestor indicates how much its health has deteriorated. A capacitive and resistive component makes up the overall leakage current. The resistive component is important since it contributes to the device's heating, and the level of power loss is directly influenced by leakage current, which decides whether the lightning arrestor can continue to operate without overheating. The quantity of internal current and the increase in temperature must be measured to calculate the useful life of a surge arrestor. Now the housing for the arrestor is made up of polymeric or ceramic materials. An external bushing is provided by the ceramic all polymeric housing. Contaminants such as seawater spray or industrial pollutants might cause the bushing to degrade. Contamination like this can cause flashover or surface tracking. Degradation modes for porcelain and polymeric bushings are also distinct. Por uh, porcelain bushings are susceptible to cracking, chipping, flashover burns, and copper splash. Flashover burns or partial discharges can cause polymer bushings to deteriorate on the other hand. Seals and valves which are used to relieve pressure can also wear out. Seals and pressure relief valves can fail, allowing wet air into the, uh, into the housing and causing the internal environment of the arrestor to deteriorate. Mounting hardware and structural support of the arrestor will also corrode over time, especially in chemically contaminated or corrosive settings. Concrete foundations are susceptible to cracking, settling, and spalling. Furthermore, environmental conditions such as corrosion and damage from ice and wind can cause electrical wires and connectors to degrade for this asset. Now before we move on further into our course, let us take a brief look at our sponsor for this course. Now as an engineer, especially when I first started in my career, I really felt overwhelmed the list of documents that we need to do on top of our technical work. Yet these documents are very important in our career as it is the more prominent thing that displays our credibility to management and to our clients if we so decide to become an engineer consultant, which is where the real actual money is. Now, I don't have these tools available to me when I first started my career, but now PM Milestone has created this package of all the professional templates that you need so that you can focus more on the technical aspect of your career. These templates are tried and tested by real professionals, so you should feel confident in using them in your career to present your best foot forward in front of your manager or clients. These templates are also updated periodically, and I think their last update is just 2021, so they are not going to be out of date or context to the present times, as these people are serious in getting the most professional product to meet your needs. They are also very confident of the quality of these templates too, as they offer you their product completely risk-free with 60-day money-back guarantee if you are not satisfied with it. So. If you are interested in this product and would also like to support me in creating these courses on YouTube in the future, please check out their product using the link in my video description titled Course Sponsor PM Milestone 2.0.
Visual inspections, in addition to service age and infrared testing, is a popular and useful method for finding exterior problems in surge arresters. Cracks in the porcelain, symptoms of surface contamination, aberrant rust staining, and any other abnormal physical state of the arrestor can all be detected by a uh, professional service staff like your field crews. So now let us go over the categories that make up the health index. Now the first one of course is service age. So for the rating of four, it is gonna be any arresters that are um, younger than five years. Uh, for the rating of three is given to arresters that are between six to 10 years. Rating of two is given to arresters 11 to 15 years. Rating of one is given for 16 to 20 years. And any arresters that are higher than 20 years of age, we will assign a rating of zero. Next is visual inspection. Um, for the rating of four, all components, including electrical conductors, connectors, grain rings, etc., are clean, corrosion-free, and in good condition. No external evidence of overheating or any other abnormalities, and everything just appears to be well-maintained. Now, for a rating of three, it means that there are normal signs of wear um, uh, and any other conditions that are just normal with age. As for rating of two, it means that there are significant degradation of the components, uh, such as the conductors, connectors, grading rings, etc. But overall, the condition is still acceptable. As for rating of one, it means that one of those components, uh, which is the conductors, connectors, grading rings, etc., are deemed as unacceptable, but they are repairable. However, when it is assigned a rating of zero, it means that one of these components is in unacceptable condition and cannot be brought into an acceptable condition, meaning that they cannot be repaired. The last category is infrared results or IR test. Now this category, again, same as the other assets, has only three ratings, which is four, two, and zero. So for the rating of four, again, it's no hotspots detected. For the rating of two, it means that there are noticeable hotspots, but they do not jeopardize uh, safe ongoing operations whatsoever. And lastly, for the rating of zero, it means that there are very serious hotspots detected on the arrestor. And now let's talk about the weights for uh, each of these categories um, with respect to the uh, arrestor's health index. So we put the highest emphasis in the infrared scan, um, and then we're going to uh, assign visual and service age relatively to each other, but we're gonna assign service age higher than visual. So service age will be four, visual will be three, and the IR test or the IR scan will be assigned a weight of eight. So now let us go over an example. Let us consider a lightning arrestor of 18 years, in which it will be a rating of 1 in that category, with normal signs of wear and tear, which is a rating of 3, and no hotspots detected, which is a rating of 4. Calculate the health index for this particular arrestor. So of course, you first uh, calculate the calculated score, which is the rating, multiply its uh, uh, weight of the category, and then you sum it all of those up, which is equal to 45 in this case. Then you calculate the maximum achievable score. So it's the maximum score or four multiplied by the sum of all weights. So um, in this case, the number is equal to 60. So health index equals to score calculated divided by score max times 100. So it's 45 divided by 60 times 100, and that equals to 75. And as mentioned in the fundamental section, a value between 70 to 85 is considered good. And as such, there might be deterioration of some components of the arrestor, uh, but only normal maintenance are needed. Now, if you like this video, please don't forget to click like and subscribe to our channel. Our channel, the Double E Bootcamp, has a wealth of knowledge regarding to the energy industry. So be sure to check it out. Also, this video is part of a playlist of the whole course, and so I've put the link to the playlist for this free course in the video description. 
As you may be aware, I'm a professional online instructor that teaches various topics regarding to the energy industry and offers certificate of completion at the end of each course. As you probably have noticed, this course needs fundamental knowledge in basic asset management. Physical asset management is important and the skills are highly sought after in many large companies within the energy industry or any industry that manages large asset in infrastructures for that matter. If you lack knowledge in physical asset management, look no further than my physical asset management management fundamentals course offered at electrical engineering portal. As in that course, I will provide you with the fundamentals that you need to kickstart your career in the physical asset management world. Another type of knowledge that you need for this course is fundamental information about the power distribution system. If you don't have enough experience in the industry, I would suggest you to enroll in my distribution power engineering fundamentals course hosted on Udemy as in that course, I will walk you through the different parts of the power distribution system as well as basic design concepts that you will need to kickstart your career in the industry. Now, I have put the links to both of these courses in the video description also. Lastly, I have also included the link to my website in the video description that contains the information to all the courses that I offer as well as other helpful resources um, that you may find useful in your career or in your learning path. Thank you and I wish you good luck in your career. Remember, knowledge is power.